So here is the painting and all the masking is dry and I just wanted to review what I did. I put some masking on these leaves in the foreground. I put masking along the top edges of each boat and I masked out some little details like this little curved thing and this little doohickey. The boats have a lot of doohickeys and those make for really nice um, jewelry at the end of the painting. So that was my thinking. So I masked along the top of each boat. Let's see if I can really get down in here so you can see what I did. I'll use, I'll start with my size zero Simply Simmons liner and see how that goes. And add a little bit of warmth here with the burnt sienna. And you can see this is about tea consistency. All right. Now, I really don't think this has to be too hard for the boats. We just want to get in some lines to suggest, hey, this is a boat you're looking at back here. And I love these little hard lines that have these delicate curves to them. So I do want to highlight that. And then this has just most delicate of colors. It's not too light, not too dark. Just gonna add in some jewelry as I go. And you can just totally make up some stuff. It doesn't have to be. Because if you look at the pictures, it's just a bunch of lines. And the most beautiful part about these boats is the curve to them. Mm, I need a little bit of that was too wet and I can't control my paint as much. So I'm going to sop up some of that paint. And just to make that little area interesting, I'm going to add a bit of blue just to add some variety to that wash. It's not all just a straight flat brown wash. And let's try to remember to do that in this painting. So for this next line, let's do that. Let's start out with some brown in our brush and then switch to some purple just to add some interest and go back to brown and picking up some burnt sienna and I'm just focusing on that pretty curve of the boat let's clean this line up a little bit And then just put in some of these subtle lines the boats have. And I'm going to put in some jewelry here just to, to, to denote boat details. All this area in here is pretty light and I already put in some jewelry details so I'm just gonna paint over those and here I'm gonna get some violet on my brush I want this lighter and the whole point of this to keep these shape areas interesting. And put in a little bit of cobalt in there and pick up some of the pigment so it doesn't have those hard edges when it dries. And then this is much darker. 
in this area. So I'm going to let this dry just a little bit and then I'll go in and really pop that color in. All right, I'm going to work on this boat. And I think I will stick with my size zero Simply Simmons liner for now. Where is it? Here it is. Look how cluttered I get everything so fast. Boy. Okay, so I like the burnt sienna detail on this boat, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to tilt the paper so I can have a better angle. Here, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on my brush just to change up the color a little bit as we go down the length of the boat. For this portion of the video, I thought I would do a voiceover just so I can really explain in better detail exactly what I was doing in this painting. And for all the rails of the boats, I wanted to make sure that they were as interesting as possible and the way that I did that was I the way that I did that was I made sure that almost every brush stroke had a little bit different color in it at least and some had a lot different color in it and I just think that that added a lot of interest to this painting another thing that I remember when I was doing this I was using my Alvero casting net which is basically a mop brush and I do have a link to that in my supply list for my Patreon students. But um, during part of this painting, uh, in this session, you can see I switched to my Simply Simmons brush, which is a size zero Simply Simmons liner. And the reason I did that is that it just gives so much more control in small areas than that Alvaro Castagnet brush. That Alvaro Castagnet brush almost had too much water in it and I couldn't really control the line as well as I wanted to. So I used my Simply Simmons and that made it a lot easier to focus on painting in the jewelry in this area of the railings of the boat. And what do I mean by jewelry? Those are the tiny little details that really add some, somehow they add pizzazz. It's just like when a lady wears jewelry, it really helps uh, kind of pull together the outfit same kind of idea with a painting and you don't want to put too much jewelry and you don't want to put too little jewelry just a little and it will really make your painting pop so boats make it easy to do jewelry because they have all those little bits and pieces on them that you can just kind of add in and you can even make up things and the eye will believe you so for this railing, again, I was using mostly burnt sienna, but I also used naphthol red. I used Windsor violet. And here, when it looks even more black, I'm using ultramarine blue. And again, I'm using my Simply Simmons, and it just is giving me so much more control than that, than that Alvaro Castagnet brush did. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this little video session. I this was one of my very first Patreon tutorials and I remember it fondly because I was so excited about this picture because it is a beautiful picture. Thank you, Dina Samard, for the beautiful picture. And I really had a hard time with this painting because it has so many medium tones in it that I really... Um, wasn't happy with the final painting. I'm happy with a part of the painting and so I ended up cropping it just to the boats and that's a lot more successful composition but as a whole it, this painting was a little bit too heavy on the medium tones and it was not it did not hang together successfully in the end. I didn't feel so I was very frustrated and I was trying to do a good job for my Patreon students and I had this crazy painting that was wrestling with me the whole way. And fortunately for my Patreon students, I videoed that entire process. And I think that that was a learning experience for me and my students as well, that that's just kind of part of the art process. You take chances, you learn, you move on. And I'm not a landscape 
painter and I took this on as a challenge and I don't know if that was a good choice as a Patreon teacher. As an artist it was a very good choice because I learned a lot from my mistakes. Uh, one of the things that I learned is when you're looking at reference photos make sure that they have the right combination of medium tones, light tones, and dark tones because uh, like the boats I feel like they got lost because they were a lot of medium tones and then the background and the water around them were all kind of medium tones and I was wanting the boats to really stand out but what ended up happening was everything kind of got lost in each other. So when I crop this down to just the boats, I think it looks a lot better and I love how the boats look. There are parts of this painting that I absolutely love, but there are so many mistakes and I do talk about them all in my full length Patreon tutorial. In this tutorial that I'm making for my YouTube subscribers, it's a shortened version even of this session. So if you wanna see the full tutorial with all the nitty gritty details, then join my Patreon and there are 12 sessions, so um, there's also a free downloadable traceable with it and reference photo. And again, thank you, Dina Simard, for your beautiful reference photo. Okay, you guys, I will probably do another shortened version of the next session, number three, so stay tuned for that and be sure to subscribe. And if you want to learn from me more closely, join my Patreon. There is a link below. Thanks so much, you guys. Take care. Bye.